before we start, I would like to ask your help to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and smash the bell. Smash like hawk. Um, so I'll be calling upon our last speaker for today, Dr. Lo Kapin, um, on the to give the talk on the ethical considerations in regard to sex selection for non-medical purposes. Hi, can you hear me? Good afternoon, Dr. Lo. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kavita. Long yeah, time no see. How are you? Since Sister Ko, I think I see his, her name here as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do I share my screen now? Or? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Asa, can you uh, understand? see if I can unshare? Yeah, okay. Alright. Okay. Let me yeah. see. Slide show. Okay, can you guys see my slides here? Yes. yes. Okay, so um, I shall start. Thank you, I am you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Hussein, for inviting me, Dr. Hussein. All right, so uh, actually I changed the topic a bit. So I name it as a uh, sex selection or rejection. Playing God or is a God-given right, okay? So if you all can see from the screen, actually this is one of the new thing in our country, okay? Where all the patients were pregnant at around 12 to 16 weeks, then they'll have this, uh, this party called gender review party, okay? Where there will be a balloon and then, okay, let me just click, all right? Okay, and there'll be a balloon and then when they burst the balloon, then they will see whether what is the colors coming out? Is it the blue color? Then it's a boy. If it's a red color, then it's a girl. All right. So today is very near to lunch. So I'm thinking of maybe just put it as a menu of day for this uh, my talk. The first part of the menu is about sex selection and rejection. Second part is what is the ethical consideration for and against. And of course, the last one is a bring home message, a conclusion. All right. So the first thing in the menu today is the sex selection or rejection, okay? So as I mentioned just now, um, nowadays we have this uh, gender review party, okay? And then in that party is very happening, we have uh, uh, we have some gift where they have a nuts, you know? If you see the nuts here, those who are bulkier means inside there is nuts means boys and no nuts means as, uh, ladies, okay? So before we go for sex selection, actually, in our current situation, we already have a thing called uh, sex revelation, okay? And then from our antenatal ultrasound, we can see that at around 16 weeks, we can see the ultrasound signs. If it's a burger sign, means that it's a female. And if it's a drumstick sign, then it's a male, okay? Of course, this is not very accurate because it sometimes depends on the position of the baby. And also, if sometimes the umbilical cord is there and it can be uh, confused or misinterpret as a penis, all right? And the most accurate part is, of course, to do uh, this uh, cell-free uh, fetal DNA where we can know that from the placent from the baby, the genetic material actually go inside the blood of the mothers, okay? And then from there, we extract and we can see whether the baby has any genetic problems and also the gender. Okay, so for me, the personal theory is like, okay, maybe this is the reason why mom is closer to the, the, the children because the mom blood itself contains the genetics of the, of the baby, all right? However, in some countries, if you all must know, you can see this is one of the naughty spots in a, a hospital in a, a country. I think if you all can guess, it's in India, okay? So all this... Gender revelation, okay, not gender selection yet, is actually illegal, okay? And why is it illegal? It's because of the main topic that I'm going to talk about, which is the sex selection, all right? Okay, so before I go into uh, sex selection, maybe I can just talk a bit about how the baby come along the embryo, okay? So first, if you can see the slide, uh, the sperm will fertilize the eggs, all right? and then become the embryo and then the embryo they'll become two two cells four cells eight cells and then become a bigger embryo and then implant okay so what determine whether this embryo is a male embryo or a female embryo is where we look at the genetics okay so everyone of us we are not x-men we are just normal humans we have 46 chromosome when the sex chromosome is depending on the 
the two sex chromosomes from the sperm and the eggs. All right. So if the sperm is X, the X is X, so it's XX double X. Then it's a female. All right. And if the sperm is Y, then the X is X, then it's XY. This is male. Okay. So maybe all the medical medical students should know this, and everyone who have a scientific background should know this. All right. But I'm just want to go to the basic. Okay. So this is something that maybe not everyone know is about. What does the sperm looks like? Okay, of course you know that the sperm looks like there's a head, there's a torpedo head, and then there's a middle part of the body, and then there's a tail. All right, but the X and the Y sperm is different, in a bit different. Okay, where you can see that the Y sperm is smaller. All right, and then the tails is like also shorter. So actually you can see the Y sperm are actually more fragile. Okay. And the egg sperm is actually bigger, but the body is bigger and the tail is also uh, shorter, so it's actually slower. All right. So you can see from these two difference is how is actually determine whether whether this baby going to be a boy or a girl. Okay. What what I mean is like you can see the Y chromosome, the Y sperm is a very fast sperm, but it's fast. It dies very fast because. It works very hard, very quick. Okay, it's not the slow and steady type. But the X chromosome sperm is the one that's slow and steady. Okay, so it's like a turtle and a hare rest, uh, race like that. Okay, so in a way, sometimes people say that actually, uh, whether you get a baby boy or baby girl, it depends on the sperm. So if you can see that it's not about sex selection. Some we have this sex, uh, how's it argument? Okay. So we say, okay, I get a baby boy, baby girl is because of the, is because of the guys, okay. But this is not true, okay. What baby you have, I mean, what gender or baby you have, it depends not only on the guy, it also depends on the girl as well, okay. Because the baby belongs to both of you, the boys, the 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 guys and the girls, okay. And the environment in the ladies also determine whether which sperm will be finishing the race. Okay, so can you see that in this picture I got two classification of uh, food? Okay, some food are more alkaline, some food are more acidic. Okay, as you can see, acidic acidic means that it's more harsh environment acid. Okay, so usually harsh harsh environment, the Y sperm will not survive too much. I mean, they will it will the strongest will survive of course, but usually only the X. Uh, sperm will survive. So in this chart, actually, I'm in a way telling you how to sex select, but actually it's not true. It depends on the ladies what kind of food you take. All right, if you take more of alkaline food and the sperm that goes in, of course, more Y will survive because it's a less harsh environment. And if the Y sperm is worked hard enough, fast enough, and then if you, the ladies, have orgasm, it's actually the uterus is working like a vacuum. Actually, you can suck in the sperm faster and the Y can reach the eggs faster. Then you have higher chance of having a male baby. All right. So this is the initial uh, non, I mean, we don't use any uh, reproductive technique. We can try to increase the chance of having a boy or a girl. All right. And of course, it depends on the boys as well. If the boys is wearing those tight jeans and always put a lot of handphones around the testicle, then it's a harsher environment. Then of course, the Y sperm cannot survive, and then the Y sperm will be less, and the X sperm will be more in the testicle. All right. Okay. Then we go on to something more advanced. Okay. So in the olden days, not so olden as well, just very like. Modern as well, um, they have a sperm sorter. All right, so this sperm sorter it will sort out the 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 X and Y sperm, and then increase the chance because if you have the Y sperm, then the higher chance of having a boy. Okay, and then we have something we call uh, this uh, sperm swim up. Okay, so when we do the intrauterine insemination, we spin the sperm. Okay, and the first spin, we get only the fast fast swimmers okay and then if we spin again then we get an even faster swimmer so you guys guess the fastest swimmer is usually the x sperm or the y sperm do you have the answer 
yes if you have the answer then you are right okay it's the x sperm because it's a smaller sorry it's a y sperm okay y is a smaller and it's a faster okay so if you will double swim up it's a higher chance to have a boy baby boy because it actually the y sperm is smaller and swim faster while the x one is like a slow and steady okay can survive very long uh, sperm okay and then the new technique that they have uh, in this uh, reproductive technique is this uh, micro sort where they sort out uh, your sperm whether it's x or y and then only inseminate into the ladies so that increase the chance of having either a male or female baby and then of course this is not definitive yet the most definitive is where after just now if you remember the previous slide after the embryo has formed and then it slowly becomes two to four cells eight cells and then you can see here there's a needle okay scratching inside and this is a pictoria where some of the cells are being taken out so this taken out of the cells and they take, test the cell of the gene and to see whether this gene has any problem okay so where this testing goes there has uh, a few um, how to say classification okay this technique is called pgt okay so you must know this pgt because later i'm going to talk about this pgt and you may be lost okay but in very simple form we have pgta pgtm pgtsr okay so a is about the number of chromosome okay so primarily we want to reduce any like uh this tries like this uh, down syndrome with three chromosome then we have pgta but pgta also check for the chromosome uh, of sex chromosome like xx xy so we know that this embryo is a male embryo or female embryo okay this is the number of chromosome okay for pgtm is much more uh, zoom in because the gene is a single gene in the chromosome and we are specifically check for those single gene disorder where they have a family background like cystic fibrosis uh, or brca huntington disease and then for the pgt sr is about the rearrangement to see any abnormalities so from this we know that before we put in the embryo we know that this embryo is healthy so healthy increase the chance of conception because it's a healthy embryo healthy embryo you have higher chance of healthy pregnancy okay but in the in the same way we can also see the gender of the baby all right see this is where the final how to say the most accurate way of sex selection in uh conception okay sex selection all right so the second part is a bit difficult because uh, it's about talking about the ethics okay of doing this sex selection all right so what are the point towards for what the point again seen the olden days okay i have a very old photo here the debate is still ongoing okay the debate is still ongoing because uh, ethically a lot of people say that it's for mm -hmm. ethically some people say it's against okay of course we don't go into a fighting like this all right okay this photo of fighting is uh happened in this jordanian uh parliament when they debate about uh female rights in the country all right you all can look it up later all right okay so which sides of the device okay is it for or is it against for is because of patient autonomy and reproductive liberty i'll tell more about it later against what is the point against against is there's a possible misuse of medical resources there is a possible harm towards the offspring the woman and even the man and there's a risk of discrimination and there's social injustice okay so we don't of course the four and against is quite balanced it's not just a number game where you have two versus four and then four wins okay no it's not a football game okay it's about the whole situation for the patient and the doctors and the whole country and the community okay so this is the point for for sex selection okay so it's about patient autonomy it's like you you are the mother you want to choose uh, your gender of the baby so a lot of reasons that there is a lot of reason many okay some because or say or maybe uh, it might 
family uh, they prefer uh, male baby some they say prefer female baby or you have personal preference you want to have a baby who is a male or is there maybe other reason so the reason got a lot okay and of course some who have already have a baby boy baby boy baby boy baby boy then they say um, I want to have an experience of raising an offspring of another sex means a different baby then say I want a female baby all right so this is patient's autonomy autonomy is one of the pillars of the ethics all right and then the third one is about some patient because of the gender they have a they have they, they affect their reproductive decision making it's like I only will have a baby and only if I know that the baby is baby girl it's like if I don't know that it's baby girl I won't be pregnant so you can see that this will affect the reproductive decision making so the sex selection comes in and this is about patient autonomy and of course the last one is about a one child family last time China used to have the one child family then it's a great significance because the family wants a baby boy then they want to make sure that it's selected it's a baby boy then only uh, they get pregnant and it will actually affect their whole fam health family in the future because they only want one family but this is not just a country some family itself like or I don't like to have too many children I only have only one one so it's like not because of the country it's my own personal choice my like the not personal choice I mean the couple choice and the and the family choice or because of economic background and then it's very great significant that they want to choose whether it's a boy or it's a girl all right the second thing is about uh reproductive liberty all right so sorry uh Reproductive liberty is where if, let's say, we uh, do not give the patient this autonomy or the privacy, then we are like, try to police the sex selection. It's like, we try to, like, try to be a judge that, uh, I tell you this session, I cannot let you uh, select. Then it's like, we are paying, we are paying like, uh, we are like, policing them. So, of course, the patient will also judge us back because it's like we are hindering their liberty to reproduce and then hindering their liberty to choose a gender of the baby that they would like. And then of course, there is a reasonable differences of upbringing of a baby boy and a baby girl. And it does not necessarily mean that uh, just because they want another baby boy, then they will love the, ba the previous uh, baby girl less. Okay, And also it does not necessarily reflect the gender bias. And in that sort necessary means that uh, it is uh, not a condi not an unconditional love. It means that I want a baby boy, but I still love my baby girl a lot. I want a baby girl, but I still love my baby boy a lot. So there is a reasonable differences between the upbringing of, I mean, uh, having a baby boy and baby girl, but then it does not reflect totally that it's a discriminatory, it's a bias, or it's a lack of unconditional parental love. All right, so this is where the point is for sex selection. Okay, so now we go to the point where it's uh, against, against. So the main, the, mainly for medical point of view, the against is about the misuse of medical resources. It's like mainly for medical reasons, we do the PGTA is to avoid sex-linked genetic disease and PGTM is to avoid inherited disorder. However, some people, if they want, they, they can misuse the resources to use for sex selection, then it will be misused and then it will reduce the resources available for uh, reproductive or the fertility treatment. So this is something that we look at it that, oh, we should not be uh, supporting sex selection because potentially it may reduce the medical resources and they may be opened up to this misuse of medical resources all right second thing is about the harm towards offspring a uh, woman a man okay so the long-term risk for offspring we do not know okay what is the long-term risk for offspring if let's say you go through an IVF and we go for this sex selection where you take out a bit of the cells from the embryo to check for Normally, it won't have a very big adverse effect, but the long-term risk is still unknown. 
okay? And then there's a rare diagnostic error. It means that you take out the cells, it tell you that this baby have something wrong, something, but actually it's not true. It's very rare, okay, but it's possible. Or we take out and we check, maybe this baby has what we call it's chimeric, okay? It means that the baby have two sets of cells in the body, both male and female. And then when you check, it's a female, but then come out, it's a male. <laughs> so there's a diagnostic error, okay? And of course, if you have just, I mean, if you have the, the food, the alkaline or the acidity and you have sex, then you have a baby. That is not 100% it's a male or female baby. But you want to go through the PGTA, you need to go for IVF. Okay, so the IVF in the whole step circle, you can see the diagram here where the most painful or the most dangerous would be where the oocyte uh, collection, where that we call egg collection, where we put a ultrasound into the vagina and we put a needle and we poke inside and into the ovary and we collect the eggs okay so this procedure itself there is a risk okay there's a risk of trauma risk of infection and there's a risk of uh, other things like bleeding okay so so IVF for PGTA for uh, sex selection there is a risk and then there is a concern that we need to we need to address to the ladies and say, tell them that, you see, this is a harm as well. All right. Okay. And then, okay. The next one is about the risk of discrimination. So this risk of discrimination is actually, even from the title itself, we talk about sex selection or rejection. It's actually, there's a part of discriminating. Okay. And then the point is like, um, about unconditional love. So the main thing about talking about unconditional love is usually they will equate it to free of parental preference. It's like if you prefer something, it's not it's not unconditional. You have a preference, then it's a conditional. It cannot be a preference with an unconditional. Alright? And of course when you talk about sex selection, so first you select a sex. You want a male or a female baby. Will it go to a selection of other traits as well. For instance, or you want a baby with a double eyelid, a bigger eyes, a, I mean, better complexion. So it's a slippery slope. You first, you select your sex that you want. Then you select the skin color or you select the, the, the characteristic. So you can see that this is something that it may go into a slippery slope and you can start uh, selecting a lot of things through genetic testing, okay? And then the third point is about inappropriate gender norms and essentialism it means that you try to normalize something that you think that is essential okay it means that and then it's like you want it must be a boy must be a girl so it become a, something a norm to you but it's not appropriate to be a discriminating okay and it's psychologically harmful and it can be a very disruptive thing to the relationship because as you want a certain gender like you want only the girl then if you have a boy, then you become very disruptive your relationship with the, the child. However, uh, in, in some center, they did a research and said that if, if it's a use for family balancing, means that um, it's like uh, you have already uh, one or uh, two, maybe two boys, now you want two girls, so it's like a balance, balance of two gender, then this gender norms and Essentialism is less, so there's less discrimination, but we don't know how, how true it is, all right? Okay, so, all right, then the last part of it is about the social injustice, okay? That I mentioned just now in the first point is about the medical resources. If we take away the resources for medically indicated sex selection, then I mean, we take away that for this sex selection which is non medical data, then we have reduced the fundamental fertility care. Then the second part will be about if the sex selection is something essential, why only the rich or the one that can pay can select the sex? Shouldn't you open it all for everyone to select the sex as well? And then the, last, the second part is about social instability. All right, it's like if you have a sex selection for instance when they have a one child you can see that china they have a lot of baby boy then there'll be a lot of boys a lot of men now would it be having a gender imbalance like too many men too many boys then they cannot get a wife 
or if too many why I mean too many curves then the guys have opened up to too many options would it become a imbalance or you know in the instability of the social I mean the community in the country all right and then the third part is about social context is like different countries got different legislation okay uh, some country they prohibit about sex selection some they allow with a uh, very stringent uh, this criteria and rules and regulation okay and of course some social context about i mean some countries where we have missing girls where they went missing because of uh, infanticide okay means that once baby deliver they discover is a baby girl then you know somehow the girl disappear and then all the from ultrasound they review that is a baby girl then somehow uh, the mom have aborted okay i mean the country that i'm talking about i think it's not something that uh, people doesn't know so usually the country i mean the main country that we're talking about usually are the china an example are china and india okay and in a social context sometimes intertwined with the economic structure okay means that if you are richer then maybe you feel that you want to select sex uh, if not then maybe less okay and of course about the medical tourism right now and migrants some let's say you are in a country where you have very uh, open gender you don't have any gender bias but the migrants or the medical tourists from a gender oppressed countries in their social context they want to go to your country to have a sex selection okay and well this lead to a social injustice because they themselves do not have they themselves has uh, in a gender oppressed country they themselves have a i mean they are built up in a social context where there's a gender bias all right even though they are in a country without gender bias but the main intention of having sex selection is still there's a gender bias all right and then in a big study uh, done in us when they ask a group of uh, people about couple about would you prefer a boy or a girl so actually it shows that um three times more uh people would prefer that or oh, my first child is boys okay a boy all right and then when they tell when they ask about the second question is about um if you already have uh like maybe you have more than one children i mean the one more babies do you prefer them to be balanced or you have no preference so from this big studies uh, these studies that when they go every year i think almost 5 years uh, in a row it shows that actually 50 almost half of them they actually prefer a balance okay it's like our you know mcdonald hello kitty collection it must be a balance of different dog okay so they prefer boys and girls balance of course and a quarter of them actually have no preference okay and the rest of the quarter uh they some prefer more boys and girls some prefer more girls than boys uh some prefer only boys some prefer only girls so only a minority they wants uh like they wants this uh main preference towards lopsided towards one gender otherwise uh one quarter is like no preference okay chin chai chin chai means hokkien no preference okay like chin chai right is a hokkien and then the half of them they want it if possible want it to be balanced like two girls two boys or one girl one boy or both is uh, present all right okay so this is about social injustice all right menu of the day or last menu is about the conclusion so whether the clinician offer or decline sex selection the the ethical background is very uh, very variable and is a very difficult to to how to say to handle but a lot of things that the clinician need to know is about whether you support or decline in the back of your mind you need to know about patient autonomy the reproductive liberty the risk and burden whether there's presence of gender bias stereotyping and you must guard against coercion means that you do not want a certain gender to be targeted and to be harmed and we do not want to feel that we are policing the whole thing is i don't know appearance of sanctioning a sex selection not that we are very supportive of it or we are stopping it okay and of course we talk about social justice to make sure that the the resources that we use are not taken away from the essential medical resources okay and make sure the parents are fully informed the risk the burdens and to make sure that the parents are making the decision 
themselves and not coerced. Okay, they are not being influenced, not being pressured by their family, the society, or you know, religion, cult, religion leaders, or politician, or whatever people who are making the decision for them and not themselves. All right. And because that this is something that is ethically controversial, so it's best that every center, depending on their own centers, uh, I mean, a limitation or what their facility is, have a very clear written policies, okay, on the circumstances det- determining the availability of this sex selection, and to proceed from there to ensure that this. Is something that is uh, ethically offered or ethically declined. All right. Okay. So um, that's all for the talk today. All right. So um, in my in my title, I put that sex selection or rejection, playing God or God given rights. But in the main conclusion, it's more about playing the rights. Okay. You have the rights to offer. You have also the right to decline, but make sure you assess properly the risk and burden, and the family, the the parent themselves need to be fully informed of their rights. So you must play the rights correctly. Okay. So for those who are interested to have my slides, I have a PDF version of my slides. You have just you just have to scan the QR codes in these slides, and you can get the PDF version of my slides. All right, so I shall count one to three for you guys to screenshot. One, two, three. Okay, and these are my references. You can get from the PDF, and that's all. All right. Okay. Wow, thank you very much, Dr. Glow. That was so For interesting. Sure. That was very interesting. Thank you. Thank Do we you. have any questions, Dr. Glow? Any questions from the other speakers? Okay, I mean it's very interesting. Oh, look, basically how you took us through um, the process of you know talking about the patient autonomy with regards to her reproductive decision making, her liberty versus the social discrimination and the gender yep. imbalance. That's that that's ultimately the net effect of her her autonomy. Um, yeah. uh, with regards to the selection now uh, what is the stand for pgda in our country at the moment are we playing the god are we giving the rights what is our situation <laughs> so our situation actually uh, from legislation point of view is unlegislated uh, okay? okay so our, i think our main legislation should should begin with i mean for ivf itself from what I see in this country, is the main thing is to legislate something to control the number of embryos we implant. I think, okay. I think a lot of times, I think uh, the KKM, the ministry, are struggling with a lot of this uh, multiple pregnancy, because uh, multiple pregnancy, of course, IVF is like putting more embryo, the chance of, of success is higher. So. Uh, the, the main thing is like if we put in more then the chance of having multiple pregnancy is more and then at the end it will burden the system because you know uh, multiple pregnancy will have more uh, premature delivery prams and the pram babies they need more I mean need more resources taking into it so I think from there the regulations should start then only they regulate uh, the sex selection whether uh, I mean, must properly assess the, the parents to make sure that there is no cohesion and all this informed consent, fully informed that the parents they know about the risk and the clinician should should proceed accordingly, not to like uh, police that oh I have I, I don't support sex selection I I I I will tell you you shouldn't sex selection something like that but I mean in so certain there is, case, if there is not, a role for it. Yeah. yeah, there's a role definitely okay. because okay. you can see that it's controversial. But if it's an individual thing, then there is a role for it. Yeah, definitely. How about the insurance coverage for these procedures in the private? Uh, insurance, insurance totally doesn't cover uh, this uh, yeah, reproduction. Cost- uh, totally, yeah, totally yeah. owned by the patient. Yeah, not not covered. Yeah, so so 
So <laughs> it is so a very complex uh, uh, process by itself. Yeah, the yeah. itself is a complex process, and she has yeah. to put herself through that for the purpose of yeah. the sex collection. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for giving that perspective. Well, uh, I think sure, I sure, no learned a lot from yeah. these lectures. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any questions, to Dr. Lo? Any questions at all to other panel yeah, members? Yeah, Dr. Lo, can yes, I ask? Yeah. Can 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 sure, but I uh, Dr. Lo, I don't know the. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Lo, please, uh, if uh, there is any uh, sex selection done in this country, in Malaysia, uh, for non-medical indication, is, is it acceptable by the society or fatwa, the fatwa committee, any limitation to this, or it is acceptable to be done in Malaysia? Um, I think uh, regarding it's the fatwa, I'm selection. not sure because I didn't go into the uh, the religion part, uh, okay. But so far, I've seen that uh, the sex selection is from, uh, from your practice. In uh, for non medical or so non medical reason, I think um, the the country religion does not um, does not hinders uh, the sex selection. As long as the the I mean the sperm and the ovum is from the couple, so it's not like uh, those gamete or donor I mean gamete donor ovum donor or sperm donor. So for Muslim itself, I think I am not sure about the fatwa itself. But the main thing is the baby must come from the couple itself, not from a donor. All right. And then in this country, it's quite common to have uh, this uh, sex selection, the PGTA done, and the main thing is about uh, whether how the clinician actually discuss with the, the parents and then uh, yes, I've seen them, uh, I mean I've seen it's quite common to have sex selection in this country, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question, uh, Dr. Hussain? Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. okay. There is one question to Dr. Noraza. Okay. Um, I think this is doc to Dr. Noraza. The, Raza, you're yeah, around. Because, uh, Thank you. Yeah, there is a question. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, there is law and practice to do pre marriage testing. But if there is no such law in the country, then how to ask second party? Oh, this is for HIV and hepatitis. Sorry. It's HIV. Yeah. Uh, yeah but if you... well, there is no such law in the country, then how to ask second party that we want HIV or hepatitis testing before marriage? I think we do have. In the country, yeah. then uh, it's Muslim couples. Yeah, right? we have kind of uh, premarital yeah. testing that is yeah. mandatory, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is okay. not in all state actually. Okay. Not not all state. Not uh, all states, uh, make it a must to check for HIV. HIV. Yeah, only a few states. So so you cannot ask actually. It's not ethical to ask your partner to go for a test to force them to go for a test before you're married, okay. unless the authority says so. I think Johor for one has, but the other states none. Okay. Right. Thanks, Prof Nazima. Anybody else Hi, have any questions? Hello, hello, Captain. Hi. Yeah, Prof Nazima, I have one question. Yes, it is in. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, if the patient we, we did the genetic count, uh, genetic testing, and the baby have the thalassemia major, and do you offer the patient termination or abortion? If she refuses, what we can counsel her if she is refusing the, If she's uh, refusing termination what? of the pregnancy. If she's refusing termination. Is, is that your to question? Terminate the pregnancy. Yeah. If she, if she had thalassemia, her baby had thalassemia major. Okay. And she's refusing so, to. If the, the answer is very easy. If she refused termination, there's nothing very much you can do. You cannot force anyone I'm, to okay. go uh, for termination, oh. especially with thalassemia, uh, beta thalassemia major. Because the. But the, you offer her? You offer termination? Uh, I would discuss with them the option. I don't offer or I don't discourage. I would, I would inform them of such uh, option based on huh. what the law says. So I, I would go by what the law says. That is especially with beta thalassemia major because the fetus itself has no 
detrimental effect on the mother uh, during pregnancy. A different issue probably will arise if it is an alpha thalassemia major because there are more effects on the mother. So the, the discussion would be uh, taking a different kind of tone because I'll be considering maternal risk also. Not only alpha thalassemia major is not compatible with life, but the effect on the mother is uh, more than it is uh, if it is a beta tel major baby. Yeah. But cannot force any procedure on anyone if they don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Any more questions from the floor? Okay. Okay, we come to the end. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell and then share it all away.